afternoon. I am joined here today by Belmont Chief of Police James McIsaac, as well as a number of members of the Belmont Police Department, Assistant Chief Hurley, Captains Donahue, Captain O'Leary, Sergeant Paul Garabedian, and Sergeant Reagan, as well as Trooper Eric Hayes for the Massachusetts State Police assigned to the District Attorney's Office, and my Chief of Homicide, Adrian Lynch. This, this morning, a jury returned a verdict finding Dean Capsalis guilty of second degree murder, a violation of constitutional rights causing serious bodily injury, assault and battery by means of a dangerous weapon, that weapon being a motor vehicle, causing serious bodily injury, and leaving the scene after causing injury. These convictions arose from an incident here in Belmont on the afternoon of January 19th, 2021. Shortly after four o'clock that afternoon, Belmont police received a 911 call reporting that a man had been struck by a car on Upland Road. Police immediately responded, found Mr. Tapia was conscious but suffering from life-threatening injuries. Belmont Rescue transported Mr. Tapia to Mass General Hospital where he later died of his injuries. The subsequent investigation revealed that what had begun as a simple argument about whether or not a blinker was being used in traffic, four o'clock in the afternoon on a residential street, that the two gentlemen, we learned from neighbors and others who had watched that the two individuals had gotten out of their cars, they were in the street arguing back and forth. By all accounts, at some point after some yelling back and forth, that incident seemed to have ended and both drivers were heading back to their car when Dean Capsalis turned and hurled a horrific racial insult at Mr. Tapia. He then got into his pickup truck and drove his pickup truck directly at Mr. Tapia, causing those injuries that resulted in Mr. Tapia's death. After having hit and dragged Mr. Tapia, the defendant fled, ultimately came back and turned himself into the police. We should make no mistake. This was a racially motivated, senseless tragedy. What is significant about today's verdict is that in Middlesex County, when we have violent incidents that are motivated by hate and bigotry, those will not be seen as just background facts. We will charge those separately, prosecute that crime separately, and seek accountability for that piece of what happened. Not only do we have Mr. Tapia, who had as some of the last words he heard on this earth, words that were meant to intimidate and threaten him because of who he was, a person of color. We have a family, partner and children left grieving, but we also have the impact that these crimes have on communities. They tear at the fabric of communities and they make people who live in our communities wonder if they belong here. It is our hope that this verdict today gives a resounding answer to that question, that people, everyone belongs in our communities. And when they are treated in this way, we will investigate, we will charge if appropriate, and we will seek full accountability. It will not be a background fact. I'm gonna turn it over to Chief McIsaac and then I'll be happy to take a few questions. Belmont well, Police Chief James McIsaac, I'm just going to read a brief statement. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank all the police officers and detectives and employees in the Belmont Police Department. They worked very hard on this case over two years uh, preparing for testimony and, and preparing evidence. They did an excellent job, and I can't say enough about them. As police chief in Belmont, the murder of Henry Tapier on January 19, 2021 will always be, remain a vivid memory with me. It has taken two years for this case to proceed through our justice system but justice has been served. District Attorney Marion Ryan and Lead Prosecutor Nicole Lelane presented a well-crafted and efficient plan for prosecuting this case. In her closing arguments, Attorney Elaine effectively refuted the defense's attempts to portray this incident anything other, as anything other than it was, which was a targeted attack motivated by hate. That took the life out of Mr. Tapia. Tapia. I was reassured as I listened to the testimony of witnesses, particularly the residents of Belmont, who witnessed this tragic crime. They did not hesitate to report what they had seen 
and they rushed to provide Mr. Tapia with, his, with care in his final moments. One even chased down the fleeing vehicle to obtain the license plate on the truck. The cooperation of these witnesses was essential to ensuring justice was served in this case. As I sat in the courtroom with members of the Belmont Police Department and we watched uh, the closing arguments, the Tapia family filled the rows in front of us. As a parent, my heart goes out to them. This hate crime will forever be a part of Belmont's history. But courageous witnesses who came forward and demonstrated that hate will not be tolerated here. With hard work and cooperation, hate will never define the residents of Belmont. And I'm certain our community will continue to work in making, uh, work making Belmont an inclusive and safe place to live, work, and visit. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. I have to take any of your questions. How long was the trial? Uh, began April 8th. When is sentencing? Sentencing is set for June 27th. And what's the max that he's looking at? A second degree murder conviction carries an automatic life sentence. The discretion the judge will exercise is relative to the amount of time before a defendant becomes eligible for parole. Has the top of your family have any message they want to put now? I think right now they're just absorbing what happened. This has been obviously a long process. Was the federal civil rights charges, was that involved at all here? No. And, uh, he was charged under the state civil rights statute. Charged and convicted under that statute. Since this was racially motivated, is the sentence any more than just uh, It is possible, yes. He'll be sentenced as well for the murder and then for the civil rights violation as well as the other acts related to the driving. Do you hope a case like this, a conviction like this, sets an example? Because you hear about murder, you hear about car accidents all the time, but to have evidence that this was racially motivated, especially here in Massachusetts, I mean, you, you cover this, how, how big of a deal is this? This is very significant. These are cases that are difficult, first of all, to confront what's happened in communities. They are cases, as the chief mentioned, that require, as do all prosecutions, but a particularly high level of cooperation and work to move forward with the case. And then they are difficult, I would imagine, for jurors as well, to think about communities where they live in Middlesex County as well, that to think about this kind of an incident happening at four o'clock in the afternoon on a residential street. Um, you know, we would like to think that we are better than that in our communities. And that's why it's important that we name this, and that's what we do here. We name something when it's there. When we have the evidence to charge it, we do that. And then we bring our case to the jury. And in this case, the jury found convictions on all of those charges. How long did the jury deliberate? Jury went out, I believe, on Thursday? Uh, all day Thursday. Thursday, yeah, last Thursday. Uh, I think in your history as the Middlesex DA, have you ever had this kind of an incident, this kind of a racially motivated violent attack? In your we have had, unfortunately, um, violent attacks. This is the first one, fortunately and tragically, that resulted in a death. And do you happen to know if there's ever been um, a charge found guilty by a jury for a civil rights violation like this in Massachusetts or in the Middlesex? We have had other convictions for violation of civil rights, but again, just not involving mm -hmm. a death. Okay. This is something, you know, it is with the cooperation of the law enforcement as well as our communities, we have taken very seriously, both in terms of the development of our anti-hate, anti-bias task force. I've also worked with our legislative partners around changing the statute, um, the hate crime statute, closing some of the loopholes, making it easier to proceed under this. But this conviction today shows why it's important to have that statute and how we apply that statute and how a jury is able to understand it and find a conviction in the appropriate case. Thank you. Uh, I'll tell people one thing. Uh, uh, Hoffington Deputy Chief uh, was indicted. Can you mm -hmm. talk about that? That indictment involves, as you know, allegations that while working as the school resource officer that the deputy chief became acquainted with the victim in that case who was then 15 years old um, and on a number of occasions allegedly sexually assaulted her off of school property. Something about abuse of power also or is that part of it? Well, these are allegations at that point, but obviously he was in a different, in a powerful 
position relative to a high school student. Yes. Yes. Do you think it's appropriate he was allowed to retire? The deputy chief? Those are decisions made by the department and governed by whatever their contract negotiations are. Mm. Thank you. Thank you.